Hey everyone, how are you all doing? Welcome back to another video! Today's tutorial is especially for beginners who want to learn car animation in Blender. Car animation is something everyone loves, and in this video we'll create a clean, realistic animation step by step. Let's get started! First, go to CG Trader. Common download any car model of your choice. For better performance choose a low poly or mid poly model. That way it will run smoothly inside Blender and render faster. Once the download is complete, open Blender, and from the top menu, go to File, Go Open, then load your car model. Now, we're gonna rig the car, which means linking all its parts properly so that when we animate, everything moves together in sync. Let's start with the tires. Select each tire one by one and press H to hide them. Repeat the same process for all four tires. Next, press Shift A and add an empty cube. This empty cube will work as the main controller for our car. Now, press A to select everything in the scene. Make sure the empty cube is the active object, then press Ctrl-T P and choose Parent Object. This will parent the entire car to the empty cube. After that, press alt h to unhide all the tires again. Select all the tires together, right-click and choose Convert to Mesh. This step applies all the modifiers automatically. Finally, select only the tire and the rim for each wheel and press Ctrl-T J to join them. Be careful! Don't select the brake part otherwise it might move incorrectly during animation. And that's it! Your car is now fully rigged and ready for animation. Now that the car's tires and body are properly parented, it's time to rig the car using the Launch Control add-in in Blender. First, unhide the car body so it's visible in the viewport. Next, open the Launch Control panel on the right side. From there, select your car collection. After that, turn Quick Tag Mode on. Now, select the body cube of your car and assign it the body tag. Then, select each tire one by one and assign them their respective tire tags. Make sure each tire has its correct tag, this is very important. Now, select the brake objects and give them the proper brake tag from the list. Once all the tags are done, hide the quick tag panel again and click the rig button. You'll notice that your car has now been automatically rigged. Hit the play button and the car will start moving. That means everything is working perfectly! Next, let's edit the car's motion path. Select the curve object that controls the car's path. Delete the front vertices and drag the remaining vertex forward to create a straight path. Now. Delete the old ground plane, add a new plane and scale it into the shape of a road. Add a ground collision property to this new plane so that the car interacts properly with the surface. Then, in Launch Control's Blender Kit tab, search for good road material. Pick one you like and apply it to your plane. Next, open the UV panel from the outliner. Go into Edit Mode, press A to select the entire plane surface and move to the UV Editing Workspace. Now, unwrap the plane properly so the texture aligns perfectly and looks realistic. And that's it! Now that our main road is ready, it's time to add details on both sides to make the scene look more realistic and complete. Let's start by adding a cube. We'll use this cube to create a footpath. Scale the cube along the road's length so it aligns perfectly with the edge of the road. Then scale it down on the z-axis to make it slightly thinner and scale it along the x-axis to adjust its width. Next, go to Blender Kit and search for a nice concrete or pavement material. Once you find one you like, apply it to both cubes. Switch to UV Editing, press A to select all faces, and adjust the UV map so the texture fits nicely and looks natural. Now, press Shift to D to duplicate the cube and move the copy to the other side of the road. This will give us footpaths on both sides. Now, duplicate the same cube again and rotate it 90 degrees on the x-axis. This will act as a side wall. Scale it a bit upwards along the z-axis to give it a realistic wall height. Next, let's create a pillar on top. Add another cube, go into edit mode and slightly modify its shape. Apply a good stone or cement material to it, then add a loop cut through the middle and move one side slightly downward along the z-axis to give it a natural, uneven look, as if it's been there for years. Finally, make sure correct face orientation is turned on so your texture doesn't appear flipped or broken. Now that our pillar is ready, let's place it correctly at the top so it aligns perfectly with the wall. Go to the modifier panel, and apply a mirror modifier so the structure automatically reflects to the other side. Then switch to edit mode, select the last face, press shift less, and choose cursor to select it. Go back to object mode and click set origin gear to 3D cursor. This centers the object perfectly in position. Now add another wall on the opposite side and on your pillar. Apply an array modifier. Adjust the count and distance based on how far apart you want the pillars to be. And hey, if you're new to Blender, don't forget to like and subscribe, because I'll be teaching you small trick that will help you become a pro Blender artist one day! Once your array modifier is ready, let's move on to lighting and rendering. Switch to render view, and adjust the sunlight angle. Try different degrees to see where the light looks best, and find the perfect direction for realistic shadows. Press Shift-A and select camera. 
position it according to the angle you want for your shot. For now, we're parenting the camera to the car just to test the movement. This way, the camera will follow the car as it moves, allowing us to check the angle and position of our shot. Now, let's bake the physics. If you missed this earlier, do it now. Open the launch control add-in, click on bake physics and press play. Your car will now move perfectly with real physics simulation. Next, select your camera, go to the first frame and add a keyframe. Then move to the last frame, adjust the camera position and add another keyframe. If the camera feels too far off angle in between, move to that frame, adjust its position and insert another keyframe for smooth movement. Now we're going to add a camera shake effect to our animation. I'm using a free add-on called Camera Shackify. Now, tweak your render settings, resolution, samples, bloom. After that, we'll add fog for extra atmosphere. Press Shift Play add a cube, go into the shader editor, delete the principled BSDF, and replace it with a principled volume shader. Set its density to around 0.01 or even lower if you want a softer look. Render a frame to check the visuals. If everything looks good, move on to compositing. Enable Use Nodes, add a Glare Bloom node for softer highlights, and use a Color Balance node to fine-tune your tones and add a cinematic touch. You can also export your render and finish the compositing in After Effects for extra polish. And that's it, your complete Blender Car animation scene. Fully rigged, lit, textured, fogged, and cinematic. As you can see, our animation is now rendering. I'm rendering it on low settings just to save time, since this video was mainly for teaching purposes. To show you the complete process, from setting up the model, rigging physics, lighting, and camera work, all the way to the final render. If you enjoyed this tutorial, make sure to subscribe to the channel, because in the upcoming videos we'll explore even more amazing Blender tips, tricks, and pro-level techniques. Remember, it's the small details that make you a professional 3D artist. So let this render finish, and I'll see you in the next video, with something new to learn!